Dimat channel, welcome. Right, today we're making something for this stone. This stone's cut really badly, and that's the point of this video. The facets are not symmetrical, it's all, it's all girdles, all wonky, it's all, all over the place. Really difficult to make a mount for a stone like that. Yeah, you can't, you can't make it wonky to fit the stone nicely. The stone's got to sit straight, horizontal, not twisting and stuff. Uh, but if the facets are all all over the place, it makes it really difficult for you to make a make a mount. So that's the point. This stone's going to be difficult. So that's the point of this video. So to help people who are struggling with wonky stones. Yeah, rather than just do like an hour-long video and make a collet for that, I'm just going to break it up into shorter videos. It's something I haven't done before. I'm going to break it up into shorter videos just to sort of highlight useful bits because if I make an hour-long video making a full collet for that all split claws and all nice and stuff, it's going to be a long video and then a lot of useful information gets sort of hidden in the middle. People, unless you watch the whole thing, paying full attention, uh, a lot of information will be in that video that won't really get out to the public. So I'm going to break this one up into separate videos. Cool, yeah, and thank you to a new patron, Cat. got yesterday, thank you, Cat. Uh, if you want to become a patron of the channel, it's uh, patreon.com forward slash dimeouter. Uh, anyway, cool, right, yeah, so it's patreon.com forward slash dimeouter, or just click like and subscribe like you do on all the YouTube videos you like. And uh, right, let's get onto that. Right, this is really difficult. I've got this material, yeah, because on a white tissue, it, it, the stone just goes into a black shape. So I need something darker than the stone to highlight it. It's a weird way the camera works. But anyway, this is showing up the facets a bit better. Just trying to show you every, everywhere around it. This is what I'm doing with my eye. I'm just turning it around. Obviously, it's a bit easier <laughs> when you're doing it yourself. Uh, just seeing all the facets, just looking at how they are all amongst each other. You can see how bad that one is. Look. Uh, look at the girdle. Wonky as hell. Wonky. Wonky donkey. Um, it's just bad all over. And then. Just looking at the outer shape of it, you can see the sides here, they tuck under from the girdle. That's really, that's that's good, that's kind of helpful because you don't want to see any metal work looking down from the top. So when you've got your edge or bezel there, it can just sort of go down a normal amount under the side of the stone and then it disappears out of sight, so that's good. That means your claws will go from that solder to that bezel and then over the stone without being too long, so they're nice and strong. Unfortunately, looking at this side of the stone, they're really vertical, see that? So that means for the metal, the same bezel that's nicely gonna sit like about there, um, coming around this side, you're gonna be able to see it from the top unless that goes sort of right down to the bottom. And then it's, that means you're kind of forced, if you don't wanna see the metal work around, you're forced to work to this side where it's gotta be hidden. And that means your bezel's sitting sort of right down at the bottom. And uh, that's uh, it's not great because that means your claw is really long off the top of it, so it's not as strong. Uh, so you're going to have to sort of find a way to bring it up. That means going thinner and thinner and thinner uh, until you've got like a kind of razor edge bezel, which has no really strength in it. And uh, it's quite an important part for the structure of the ring. It's got to be strong. It's what the claws are attached to. Um, it's no good if you've got really thick claws and they look really strong, but if they're attached to a really thin bezel, uh, they can still bend back because they just buckle the bezel because the bezel's so thin. I'll give you an example of that. I literally just hacked this up last night to show you what exactly you need to do. This doesn't fit that well. I was working quite late and I just hacked into it just to show you literally at this stage of the video. So it's exactly what I expected. Look, just taking the sides. This looks really bad. I'm better than this normally, but look. <laughs> the sides, yeah, there's a bit of a flat on top. That shows there was a bit of metal or a bit of uh, thickness left in them. But the sides had to keep going thinner and thinner and thinner. It was just like a razor edge before it disappeared under the stone. Um, that, for example, how strong that is, it just twists like nothing. So, not really strong enough like that. So, how do we, what do we do to help get some strength in this bezel while sitting at a kind of decent height? Okay, it might be easier to explain drawing it here. Um, I'm going to draw in this a bit of an angle to the camera, but I'll put a picture on the screen as well so you can see clearly what I'm doing. So stone is uh, just off vertical here, sort of makes it difficult. You don't want to see, you don't want to be able to see the metal work looking down on the stone. And you want the bezel to sit at a certain height, ideally about there. But if you put it there, any kind of strength you've got in it, you're going to be able to see from the top. So I think 
But it sort of forces you, if you want to hide it, it forces you to, if you want a normal design, it forces you to put it lower down a stone, but it might be like right down here. Uh, that's no good, really. And then your claw's got to be sort of that long off the top. It's going to be too, too easy for that claw to bend if it's soldered. If it's all that length before soldering on here. It's too long. So you want the bezel kind of decent height on the stone. Just draw that again. So what I'm thinking of doing, so I will actually be making this for the next video. Uh, what I'm thinking of doing, the, I'm gonna have to make it thick, yeah? I'm just gonna make it straight sided. And then that outer, it's gonna be so thin on top, it's gonna be cut to like a razor edge. So you might as well make that outer dimension the same measurement as the stone there. So it's basically just gonna come down from the stone. And then also go a bit deeper than I might normally want. And it's just gonna be straight sided. And then that gives me loads of metal after you ground, ground out that. You've got all that thickness there. And the stone can sit in there quite strong. And then looking at it, when I know what I've got afterwards, cause it might be different one side to the other. The stone's cut really badly, remember? Looking down on the stone. The sides are not even that symmetrical. There's a little bit of like that going on on my stone. So it's going to be tricky. Got to grind it out more here than here. It's very difficult working with a wonky stone. So after I've got that and the stone's sitting down at the right height and it's not twisting, not dropping down or rattling and stuff, uh, when it's sitting down at the right height, uh, I will then, say this is my bezel, I will then file the outside to get that bit of that tapered edge going on. Because you need that to set your claws in properly. Because without that, I mean, you, you could put your claws in at that angle on a straight bezel, but that means you're grinding out way more underneath. Basically doing all the grinding from the bottom edge and then nothing on the top and then your claw can go in that angle. Anyway, this is probably gonna make more sense in the next video when I actually show you doing stuff. I might, I might make a straight one, put a claw in uh, while I'm doing this as well, just to explain everything that's going on in my mind. But uh, yeah, a lot of this going on. You could, you know when we make a collet, you sort of rainbow shape a flat strip. You can sort of, you're basically doing that same job, but with a thin strip for this. Rainbow it, and then when you turn it up, you end up with a bezel like that. But the problem is, doing that on this stone, you're basically taking away your ability, you're basically making something that's more flush to the stone, it's not strong. I think you're better off making a straight one, and then just cutting away what you need to cut away. And then if you've got excess strength here, then you can file a little bit of that away. That's an easier way to proceed, and then you can sort of tweak it to exactly what looks good. So, like I think I mentioned before, you might be working with a customer stone and they want a specific design. The shoulders have got to be just like they, they've got to be, and the top of those shoulders attached to this piece that we're trying to make. So the stones can't just be any height you want or what you think you can get away with making. It's got to sit at a certain height and then look right for a particular design you're aiming for. So yeah, you've really got to get that stone down uh, into, <laughs> into a bezel and then not have that bezel sticking out one side or the other. Uh, when you're looking down on it and uh, it's just got to look normal and strong uh, but with strength that the claws go on there and it's all got sort of structural rigidity yeah difficult this job is difficult and there's a lot of problems with that and as you gain experience you can think sort of four five six steps ahead and uh, save yourself a lot of trouble but that comes after a lot of experience you basically got to go through all the trouble all the problems once you learn about all the hurdles that can happen then you can sort of work in a way to avoid uh, things happening to you and then you'll find the professional jewelers just work quickly and it's partly not just their ability to do the things it's just they're solving problems before they happen they work in a way where they don't come across these hurdles because they knew to start off with a thick bit of metal they knew to curve it a certain way first of all and um so just get get your hands dirty get stuck into it and learning the hard way learning the hard way is the best way unfortunately you might not want to hear but that's true so yeah good luck <laughs>